gone are the days when, you know, I started my business in 2007, right after the crash actually, where people used to have, you know, full-time receptionists and they would just sit there and answer calls all day long. The world has changed now, right? So in that case where you have multiple people that are effectively sharing a mailbox, the best thing to do is to delegate access to that mailbox to those multiple people. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I'll go through the most obvious ones first and then I'm gonna go through some non-obvious ones that you may not have thought of. For a health clinic, do you believe that having each user have their own email address and then delegating them to access a central mailbox or support email is a good idea so that you can see who has responded to the email and taken control of the conversation? Or, I assume there is an or, should I just create a shared mailbox that multiple people can access? Now, I've seen this many, many times because we've worked with literally thousands of small business owners and many of them have been in the medical or say allied health clinical type business. And they typically will have a number of clinicians, whether they're physiotherapists or they're doctors, and they're kind of working in the back seeing patients, right? But then they'll have people in the front managing the reception desk. And what happens there is typically there's two or three people who are either university students or they're doing an apprenticeship or they're there part-time because they've got a family to look after. And they are all sharing the responsibility of being on reception at the front of the business. Sometimes people will even be rostered to do part delivery and part managing the front desk as well. Gone are the days when, you know, I started my business in 2007, right after the crash actually, where people used to have, you know, full-time receptionists and they would just sit there and answer calls all day long. The world has changed now, right? So in that case where you have multiple people that are effectively sharing a mailbox, the best thing to do is to delegate access to that mailbox to those multiple people. And there's a couple of reasons for that. I'll go through the most obvious ones first, and then I'm going to go through some non-obvious ones that you may not have thought of. Let's do a quick drawing here for those that are new to delegating mailboxes. Okay, so in a business, if we have our office at mailbox, I like to think of these as buckets of email. So each user account in your business is effectively a bucket of email. I, if I want to share that, would create multiple buckets. So a bucket here for Peter, bucket here for Bob, a bucket here for Sarah, a bucket here for Anne. And if all of these people are needing to access that office at mailbox, we would delegate access to that mailbox to each one of those people. Now I've got about 10 videos on the channel about mailbox delegation. I'm not gonna cover it again on how to do it. You can go and find how to get that done, but that's how we delegate a mailbox to multiple people. Each one of those people can then access this mailbox without having to know the password and they access it from their own accounts, which is pretty straightforward. Let me show you what that looks like in my own email. So here I am in my own mailbox. I'm gonna click onto my account in the top right-hand corner. And you'll see here that I have multiple accounts that are delegated to me that I can access. And if I wanna access them without the password, I click one button, it opens in a new tab. And hey presto, I've got access to the mailbox. Now, why would we do that instead of just having one single mailbox for everyone? Because you know, effectively we're paying for five mailboxes here instead of just one. Well, number one reason is for security. You wanna make sure that you're not sharing any passwords in plain text inside your business. Inevitably, when passwords get shared, people are less inclined to keep them updated and refreshed every 90 days or every 180 days, which is a good idea for something like a mailbox because they don't wanna inconvenience their staff, right? Or their team members. And what tends to happen is that mailbox will just be kept open to the world, to all of those people that are using it. Inevitably, someone might leave your business and you may forget to change the password. You're probably not gonna bother setting up two-factor authentication because that's gonna annoy people if it's just tied to one mobile phone anytime you wanna access it. And that creates a pretty bad security risk for your business. Most of the security, let's say, vulnerabilities that exist inside the Google Workspace ecosystem, although I'm very careful to use the V word, is actually through social engineering of humans. And what that means is that it's humans doing dumb things. It's not an inherent flaw in the system or the software. It's humans being tricked into doing something. And when you've got a username and a password that's pretty much open, it can be easy for someone to get into that Google account if it's not protected with two-factor authentication. It also goes to say that if someone has somehow got a virus or a piece of malware installed on that computer, and they start to log the keystrokes of the computer happening in the background, 
Well, what that means is that someone can access that account without a second factor device. Therefore, they've got access to your business. And one of the most common scams going at the moment is an email from a legitimate user, a legitimate staff member going to a business owner saying, hey, it's really urgent. We need to pay this bill and we need to make sure this supplier is paid on time. Otherwise, they're going to cut off our supply. And that happens from a real email address inside your business with the name of a real supplier that you recognize. And so if you're a business owner and you receive that email, it may even be the time of the month when you would normally pay that supplier. Are you really gonna go back and check every single invoice and every single account number as you pay every single bill? I know that I personally don't. And that means that it can be pretty easy for someone once they have access to email to filter money outside of a business. You gotta be really, really careful with this these days. And this is one of the easiest ways that people get access to accounts and run that kind of phishing scam. So that's the first reason. The second reason is in a small business, you've got lots of people who are involved. Some people work part-time, some people work full-time, some people may work remotely from home, some people may be contractors outside the business or even consultants that come in and out from time to time. Everyone ideally wants to feel like they're a part of the team that they're working on. And if your business is just issuing one email address to five people that's reception at your business, well, they're only ever gonna feel like their identity in the business is reception at. If you wanna foster a team environment where your team are contributing to culture, where your team are spending time contributing to the business with their energy, with their personality. If you just give five people one work personality, well, that's gonna limit them a little bit there. So my strong persuasion for you is to consider giving every person their own identity in the business, because that means things like group chats keep everyone feeling more connected with their own name. Now, if you're the kind of business owner who has you know, user one or manager one or operations at your business, that's okay to have those email addresses set up for your customers to only use one central email address to get in touch with you. I understand staff come and go, but I wouldn't give your staff an operations at email address or admin at email address as their primary mailbox because that removes their identity. Give them an identity with their name. And if you need to set up an alias for the operations mailbox for that to come into their account, that's totally fine. Or the other option, like I've suggested here, is setting up a delegated central shared mailbox, and that can be shared to multiple staff members who can access it. And yes, you can see who's replied to those emails, who's managed those emails, and it gives you one place for all of those emails to exist and be kept accountable for multiple staff members to work on. If you need more help with what we've covered in this video, IT Genius provides support services to businesses all over the world with problems just like this. Click the link below to get started.